Time for today's big race in the Hennessy Gold Cup. A slightly smaller field than normal. Three and a quarter mile grade three handicap. This is one of the big handicaps of the season. Of course, Dawn of the New Age, Joshua Sutherland, Acaster Malbis, Darren Thompson, Southside Kevin Meenahan, Blood Eagle, Leon Van Rensburg, Watch Disorder, Leon Van Rensburg, Bucko Martin Leadham, Catherine the Great, Paul Rhodes, Houston Obsessive, Vinnie Gerrard, Club Card, David Hooley, Crackled Alex Cherry, We Be Clarity, Martin Leadham, Right On Q, David Hooley, What No Sun, Craig Beck with Firebrand, Joshua Sutherland, Sagra More Dreams, and Clara. Bell, Graham Clutterbuck, so 16 of them then, it didn't look that many as 16, you can see them standing there, but 16 to losing an off-size field, and away they go, and the rain's coming down, it's a bit gloomy, Paul Hennessy Day, and Acast and Malbis, and Clara Bell are going to be the first two to dispute the lead as they get into the first, which is a ditch, and there's a faller straight away, it's Clara Bell, so Clara Bell crashes out the very first fence, in the Hennessy and Acast and Malbis has been left in the lead then with Houston Obsessive on its inside. They come to the second and they all successfully get over the second and you can see the main body of the field is pretty tightly grouped. No more than three lengths between all of them and they're spread right across the track with a leading pair. Acast and Malbis and Houston Obsessive are clear of them as they get to the third and they're all over the third nicely. With Acast and Malbis surely now going to tack over to the rail in the lead by about four lengths to Houston Obsessive Firebrand and Dawn of the New Age have come out of the pack into third and fourth as they get over the fourth and they're all safely over that with Catherine the Great just the back marker at this point there's a long way to go yet and Acaster Malvis is the clear leader from Firebrand who's now moved into second then comes Houston Obsessive in the green for Vinnie Gerrard. Then Watch Disorders next and Dawn of the New Age and Crackled and We Be Clarity. The grey wide on the track is Sagramore Dreams. That's the second of Graham Clutterbuck's horses. His first one, Clara Bellowing, crashed out at the very first fence. But it's Acaster Malbis leads into the fifth. All over that one, nice looking towards the back. The back three are the grey south side. It was a really good winner last week, come with a late rattle. And then on the inside, what no son on the back marker, Catherine the Great. But it's Acaster Malvis, who's bowling along nicely in the lead. I still feel quite happy to give this one a five or six length advantage at this point of the race. And they come into a plain one. And Acaster Malvis went right through that, didn't jump it well at all. Maybe losing his concentration being out there on his own. Firebrand is in second. Dawn of the New Age is in third. Watch this order fourth. Crackles move through into fifth as they take this ditch. A bit of a slow jump there by the Leon Van Rensburg horse. Watch this order. And there's Houston Obsessive and right on cue have now dropped to the back. And it's still Acaster Malbis. Despite that mistake, comes into this next play one, jumps that one nicely. Rest of the field all stream over it as well. The one that's really struggling is Houston Obsessive, and he's been pulled up at the back, so obviously something to miss with that one. Houston Obsessive has just been pulled up after that fence as they get to the ninth, and they're all safely over the ninth. With Acaster Malvis still the leader, Dawn of the New Age second, Blood Eagle third, then Club Card and Fire Run and Crackled. We be Clarity wide on the track with Sagra More Dreams. On their inside, Watch Disorder, Catherine the Great's made a bit of a forward move as they take the water in front of the stand, then they're all safely over that one, and now they go for a complete circuit of this big Newbury track. And Acaster Malvis is in the lead, leading by four, swinging left handed. With Dawn of the New Age and Firebrand second and third. Club card in the purple jacket tucked in behind them in fourth. Then right up behind that one, What No Sons made a forward move. Then comes Blood Eagle in the royal blue and gold cap as they take this plain one. This is fence number 11. And they're all safely over that one with Southside and Bucko the back two now. And Acaster Malvis has led all the way. This is way down towards the 12th. Which is another ditch. And they're all safely over the ditch. With Club Card in second, Blood Eagles move through into third, then Firebrand and Dawn of the New Age. Catherine the Great is making a forward move. What no son trapped in on the inside, but still pretty close up as they take the 13th. The leader was slow there, and now the field really starts to bunch up as Acaster Malmus' lead is down to a length. Club Card, Firebrand, then Dawn of the New Age, What No Sun, Zagra More Dreams, Weeby, Clarity, and Bucco are both trying to get into it as they take the 14th, and over the 14th they go. And Acaster Malmus is 
Got it back into a two length lead again, right on the one on the track. Sagramore Dreams, the Grey is now in second. What no son is trying to get up the inside of the Joshua Sutherland Paris. They take the 15th, and over the 15th they go south side, still the back marker, but no more than 10 lengths off the lead. It's Acaster Malbis, who is that leader from Sagramore Dreams, wide on the track. Dawn of the New Age, then Firebrand, Bucco getting closer, then Blood Eagle and What no son crackles after that one. Catherine the Great and Club Card, then Weeby Clarity. Watch this order right on cue, and finally. South side. Hey, Castor Malbis is bravely sticking on in the front as they begin to take this long turn there towards home. And this is the cross fence as they take it, and they're all safely over that one. Although Catherine the Great was down on her nose, four to take them now. The four fences in the straight, and Acaster Malbis is in front from Firebrand in second. Bucco is coming through as well. Nice now that one that's really making a forward move. He's crackled, crackles move through in a second. Acaster Malbis is in the lead. Crackled is second. The ones up the centre of the track are really putting in the challenge. This Acaster Malbis now, but Acaster Malbis is sticking on at the fourth last. Acaster Malbis over it in front, closest to us. Crackled, and with that one. He's watched this order and Catherine the Great. Then comes Bucco back in fifth. They're coming down towards the third last fence end there. The final ditch. A Castor Malbis was slow. Catherine the Great jumps into the lead. It's Catherine the Great who's gone on then. Coming down towards the final two. Catherine the Great's in the lead. Firebrand is now coming through on the other side. Also, Club Card is trying to get into it. Bucco's trying to stick on as well. They come down towards the second last. And over the second last they go. And it's Catherine the Great from Firebrand. Club Card and Bucco, these four have pulled away. They race down towards the final fence in the Hennessy Gold Cup and it's Firebrand in the lead, Firebrand takes it in front, lands in the lead, gets away from it well, Crackled is in second, Dawn the New Age has gone on the back, but Sable mate Firebrand is powering away and into the final furlong Firebrand is going to turn the Hennessy Gold Cup into a bit of a procession this is a very comfortable win and a competitive handicap and Firebrand is the easy winner of the Hennessy Gold Cup, Firebrand takes it, Catherine a great second, Club Card third, Bucco fourth then what no son and um, Blood Eagle after that and all the way back to Sagramore Dreams and Firebrand a pretty impressive performance there has taken that one with no, no missing at all in the end so Firebrand takes it for Joshua Sutherland, Catherine a great second for Paul Rhodes, Club Card for David Lee was third, Bucco for Marcel Lee was fourth, and What No Son for Craig Beckwith was fifth. Interesting thing to see there, all five of those, the first five, all ran from out of the handicap, as did the majority of the field. That, of course, was because we had the top weight who was in there and pushed the rest of them all out of the handicap, and I think that top weight might well have been Joshua Sutherland's second horse that fell at the last, but... So really, that was almost a level weight race then, so an even better performance by Firebrand, considering he should have been getting the best part of £15 off the other three.